Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning to provide an update to this Honorable House on the issue of gangs in Bermuda. Mr. Speaker, you will recall that I provided a statement to this Honorable House some three months ago where I addressed a number of matters relating to gangs in Bermuda, including root causes, our existing gang violence reduction programs, proposed programs, and our multi-ministry approach. At that time, I did not speak to gang numbers or enforcement, but will do so today, as well as provide an update on gang violence reduction teams' programs. Mr. Speaker, gangs and violence are a scourge in our community. The root causes are a painful reflection of generations of economic and social inequality in Bermuda and the mindset it creates. This combined with a number of other factors, including the breakdown of the family unit, lack of or limited education and employment opportunities make it very difficult to break this cycle and enable meaningful social mobility. However, we can and we must address these root causes to stop this cycle of youth turning to gangs. Mr. Speaker, it's a stark reality, but there are children in primary school who today, owing to their family, community, and economic circumstances, are already being indoctrinated into this antisocial mindset. Mr. Speaker, based on current intelligence, the Bermuda Police Service estimate there, that there are at least nine identified gangs operating in Bermuda. Mr. Speaker, in respect of gang membership, the Bermuda Police Service estimate that there are around 200 to 250 persons actively involved with gangs in Bermuda. In addition to the gang number, members and their families, there's a larger layer with looser associations to gangs. Our reality is that in this small community, we are all connected. Mr. Speaker, children are actively recruited from as early as eight years old. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I said children, as there are girls being recruited as well. We have children showing allegiances to gangs and committing violent acts whilst in school. Mr. Speaker, in respect of deaths and injuries from gang violence, some of the worst years were between 2009 and 2011 when 16 persons were shot and killed and 52 were shot and injured. There was a short reprieve with no recorded murders in 2019. However, from January 2020, there have been five persons shot and killed and 24 persons shot and injured. This includes the multiple shooting at a local bar and restaurant on October the 26th, 2021. The numbers are heartbreaking. Mr. Speaker, as mentioned earlier, I will speak to enforcement and the gang violence reduction team programs. Mr. Speaker, the notion that we can arrest our way out of gang violence is outdated and a misguided mindset of an bygone era. Enforcement is the option of last resort. It's when all else has failed and the individual is an active gang member, resolute in their antisocial behavior and criminal activity, that the full weight of enforcement efforts should be brought to bear. We have laws, including the Criminal Code Act 1907, the Proceeds of Crime Act 1997, the Firearms Act 1973, and Misuse of Drugs Act 1972 that provide for offenses and penalties for the gang members' criminal activity, including increased penalties for unlawful gang activity within increased penalty zones. Mr. Speaker, to be clear, there is a role for enforcement. There will be consequences for those who choose the path of antisocial and criminal behavior. Mr. Speaker, we must have a balanced approach that doesn't alienate stigmatize or victimize the very communities that need our help. Enforcement 
and preventative, proactive measures are important and both need to work in tandem to help our youth and their families. Mr. Speaker, the Bermuda Police Service is the law enforcement entity responsible for preventing and detecting crime and have adopted a robust approach to tackling gang and gun violence. As early as 2009, the Bermuda Police Service recognized the significant challenge of tackling gangs, guns, and that it required high levels of community engagement as enforcement alone could not address the systemic issues. Mr. Speaker, since 2009, the Bermuda Police Service has made a number of adjustments in response to gun and gang problems and continue to evolve with a focus on leveraging community support and technology to assist in bringing offenders to justice. Mr. Speaker, the Bermuda Police Service has implemented a gang violence reduction strategy with a core focus on partnership. It consists of three pillars, prevention, education and awareness, catch and convict, police focus targeting suppression, resettlement, rehabilit rehabilitation, collaboration. Mr. Speaker, the Bermuda Police Service continues to adapt and evolve in tackling the issues of gangs with the necessary emphasis on evidence-based approach to policing. This includes the use of information, intelligence, and lessons learned. This has resulted in multiple arrests for murder and firearm-related offenses, as well as significant seizures of illegal drugs and firearms. Multiple persons have been prosecuted with over 40 men incarcerated, receiving life and or long-term sentences for murder, attempted murder, and firearms-related offenses. Mr. Speaker, the police cannot do this alone and need the support of the, of the honorable members of this house and the community. You can play your part in reducing gang violence by supporting the police, providing information to the police, and encouraging your constituents to do the same. If you know something, say something. You can do so by calling 211, the main police number on 295-0011, or the Crime Stoppers at 800 -8477. Mr. Speaker, the problem before us is a Bermuda problem. We need all hands on deck. Our community partners must step up and assist. The gang culture is a cancer which needs to be arrested and eliminated. There is much to be done. I call on businesses, churches, sporting clubs, and communities to get involved and do your part. We can no longer turn a blind eye to the issue believing it is not our individual problem. We are in a crisis and everyone has a role to play. We are all in this together. Mr. Speaker, I also promise to give an update on the ministry's gang violence reduction team. It is important to note that the gang violence reduction team is a part of the Ministry of National Security and they have a very different role from the police. The mission of the gang violence reduction team is to aid in the transition of at-risk individuals away from delinquent peer groups and toxic environments with the aim of reducing violent crime in Bermuda. The gang violence reduction team continues to focus on prevention, outreach, intervention, community engagement, and collaboration. Relationship building is a key component of the gang violence reduction team. Mr. Speaker, the gang violence reduction team programs include the Redemption Program, a program aimed to be socially restorative and encourage the desistance of criminality. The Redemption Program trainees receive a weekly stipend for their work and case management services, educational services, and post-training support are part of the program. Work placement and mentoring program. This is a job placement program that employs and targets at-risk youth who participated in the high school intervention programs. School programs and services. 
Early intervention programs include the Hike Kings and Queens program at the primary level that target at-risk boys and girls. The Gang Violence Reduction Team also conduct weekly visits to primary schools and middle schools and daily visits to high schools to be on hand to offer guidance and assist within interventions. The Excellence Program, a partnering program with Cedar Bridge Academy. This is a 10 to 12 week program focusing on incident mediation and encouraging self-reflection. The Gang Violence Reduction Team helps students realize their self-worth. Street-level outreach work and case management. The Gang Violence Reduction Team continues to lower community tensions with a focus on prison, schools, and street-level outreach. Coordinated Crisis Response Team. The Coordinated Crisis Response Team is available following crisis response to restore peace in the community and assist family members, relatives, or witnesses to violent crimes. There's a hospital team that attend the hospital to support family and close loved ones during the peak crisis. The community team provide crisis counseling to residents following a violent incident. The team goes door to door offering support and offering guidance on services to area affected residents. Mediations and negotiations. The team assists where needed to bridge gaps and foster relationships. Community service available to support young people in obtaining their court-mandated community service hours. Mr. Speaker, the team also continues to provide non-traditional counseling sessions and family group sessions, monitor court sessions, and provide clients advocacy support during court, connect clients to various social supports, including financial assistance, legal aid, and food support provide clients who are seeking employment with assistance in developing resumes and applying for jobs, providing conflict resolution service and mediate, mediating between clients to prevent further incidents. Mr. Speaker, in our schools, the Gang Violence Reduction Team provides incident management support. This includes facilitating multi-agency department meetings to strategize the development of violence mitigation plans where, there's a high, where there is high tension or incidents between students, delivering ongoing mediation sessions, daily school lunch visits in high schools, delivering individual youth sessions, then the launch of the excellence program. Mr. Speaker, there is no one-size-fits-all approach. And to ensure that our goals are achieved, we are taking a multi-ministry approach that includes the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Social Development and Seniors, the Ministry of Legal Affairs, the Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Youth, Culture and Sports, Ministry of Health, and the Ministry of Public Works. Together, the mentioned ministries will work, will, I'm sorry, will each make concerted efforts within their domain to improve the quality of life for our youth and their families by providing opportunities for positive growth. Mr. Speaker, for instance, the Ministry of Labor has ensured that the youth employment strategy promotes support for at-risk youth and non-traditional students. The purpose is to improve pathways to employment for at-risk youth and early school leavers by providing specialized services for youth requiring additional support. Young people who are exposed to gang activity will be introduced to a skills development program for unskilled, unemployed, disadvantaged youth ages, between the ages of 18 and 26, which provides work experience, career readiness training, and a personal development plan. This will position attendees to participate in a formal apprenticeship or trainee program upon completion. In addition to skills development, the Ministry of Labor will work with external agencies to support the population of young people requiring additional support. I look forward to reporting on other ministry initiatives in the very near future. Mr. Speaker, I commend the work of the Bermuda Police Service and the Gang Violence Reduction Team, as well as all partners 
both within and outside of the government who are working to make a difference. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I leave you with this quote from Luis Rodriguez. We all need each other. Gangs do try and fill that void, but they can't do what healthy, balanced, and coherent families and communities can do. Let's strengthen our core relationships from the start and all the way through a young person's life. This is the best way to avoid the growth of deadly crime-involved gangs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.